continuing on with our spooky Halloween coverage, we've decided to put some info together about the most haunted places in America. That's right, Elliot. Now, haunted will always be in quotation marks for us. Neither of us really believe in the whole haunting thing, although it's fun to think about. We mostly feel like the things people see or feel in some locations are kind of like just their minds playing tricks on them because they, maybe they want to believe that they're feeling or seeing something. So, I've never seen shit. Oh so. no. But it's still Prove fun. Prove me wrong, get, ghosts. Still Come fun at to me. get spooked, yeah. And these places are definitely creepy. So if you want to have an experience, it would certainly be in one of these places. So we're gonna. Throw them out there for you. Start off, start off, Elliot. Let's start off with Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. On July 1st, 1863, the bloodiest battle of the American Civil War was fought in and around the city of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Despite only lasting three days, the battle claimed over 46,000 total casualties. Jesus Christ. Along with over 3,000 dead horses. That's way worse. <laughs> by, the t by the time it was all over, the stench of so much death in the hot summer sun was making local townsfolk violently ill. Even soldiers who survived the battle often went home with fewer limbs than they arrived with. Field amputations were carried out with dull, rudimentary bone saws and without any modern anesthesia, and body parts were often simply tossed out the window to be collected later. Uh, yeah, Gettysburg was pretty much hell on earth for almost everyone involved, so it's not surprising that many people believe this battlefield is haunted by the spirits of the dead soldiers, with some even calling it the most haunted place in America. It seems that every place that is supposed to be haunted, it, the locals claim that's the most haunted place. Yeah. In the area of the battlefield known as Devil's Den, there have been numerous sightings of a barefoot man in a floppy hat who's always saying, what you're looking for is over there, before vanishing. The description of his clothing matches that of the Confederate Union from Texas. During the production of the 1993 movie Gettysburg, several extras claimed to have been visited by an old man in a ragged Union uniform who handed them ammunition and described how furious the battle was. Are you sure that wasn't the filmmaker's union? Well, they assumed <laughs> that the old man was just part of the production, but when they brought the ammunition to the prop department, so they're like, well, okay, what do you want us to do with this? They were told that what they had was actually genuine musket rounds from the Civil War era. Ooh! Pennsylvania Hall at the local Gettysburg College had been used as a field hospital during the battle, and many people say it's full of ghosts. Two college professors claim that while taking the elevator down to the basement one time, the doors opened to reveal a Civil War emergency room in full operation, with bloodied, injured soldiers being treated by frantic, overwhelmed medical staff. They frantically pushed the elevator buttons to close the doors, and one of the orderlies looked right at them in the eyes as the doors shut. That's pretty fucking ridiculous. They were professors. But, uh, they, have, they have a college. Yeah, well, they might have been huffing ether or something before. Yeah, you never we know. don't know what they were professors of. Yeah. There's also been plenty of stories of voices, shadows, and ghostly apparitions around the battlefield after dark, and even some alleged video and audio recordings of soldier spirits roaming the battlefield. I've looked at some of these, and they're 95% just utter bullshit. But uh, a few of them. If he, maybe it's a ghost, I don't know. Yeah. Moving on to a local favorite, the Queen Mary right here uh, down the street in Long Beach, California. The RMS Queen Mary was a huge ocean liner that operated between 1936 and 1967. During World War II, she was converted to a troop ship and used to ferry Allied soldiers from Australia and New Zealand to England, as well as from the US to England. On one such voyage, the Queen Mary accidentally sank one of her escort ships, the HMS Curacao, when they collided off the coast of Ireland in 1942, which resulted in 239 of the Curacao's crew members dying at sea. Gee, that's a shitty accident to Yeah. Have. After the war, the Queen Mary returned to passenger service until 1967, at which time it was moved to Long Beach Harbor here in Los Angeles, where it's permanently docked and operates as a hotel and tourist attraction. Uh, since then, it gained reputation as one of the most haunted places in America again. Oh uh, yeah, they do like a Halloween thing there every year. It's actually going on right now. In the bow area of the ship, where the collision with the Curacao occurred, crew and visitors have reported hearing sounds of bending metal, rushing water, and screaming. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a shipwreck to me. Yeah. The ghost of a crew member who was crushed to death by a watertight door supposedly haunts the engine room, where many have reportedly seen a young man in dirty blue overalls who quickly disappears and reappears. Sounds like a ghost to me. It's, it's a, if, you, if there's a classic, definition of ghost, classic that's ghost. it, yeah. <laughs> The first class swimming pool is said to be haunted by the ghost of a young girl who drowned there. She can be heard giggling and splashing around despite the fact that there's no water in that pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's unexplainable wet footprints sometimes found around the pool as well. The pool changing room is supposedly haunted by a young woman who's stabbed to death in there. And people often hear sobbing coming from that area. There's even a, a video that purportedly shows her hiding in a changing room. Now this video is creepy as fuck, but... What? You know what, whatever. One of the cabins, room B340, is supposedly so haunted that it is sealed off and no longer rented out as a hotel room, since so many visitors ask to change rooms after getting spooked. 
Well, do you like horror movies? Well, here's a hotel that uh, inspired uh, one of the locations for a horror movie, The Shining. Yeah, we're talking about the Stanley Hotel, which is located in Estes Park, Colorado, and is best known for the inspiration for the hotel in The Shining, the Overlook Hotel. The hotel is considered one of America's most haunted hotels and has countless stories from visitors and staff. The story of the hotel is that on June 25th, 1911, Elizabeth Wilson, the chief housekeeper, was attempting to light acetylene lanterns in a room with an unknown gas leak. Uh -oh. A huge explosion shot Elizabeth and the entire room down through the floor and into the room below. She survived, but broke both of her ankles. That's, she got out of there pretty unscathed. Yeah. Uh, guests have reported that the ghost of the housekeeper takes special care of people that stay in room 217. People have encountered extra housekeeping services, like having their things put away or unpacked. All of the rooms have had out of the ordinary experiences reported, like items moving from place to place, lights turning on and off, and sightings of ghosts walking in the halls. Uh, apparently, if you stay on the fourth floor, you can hear the ghosts of children running up and down the halls, laughing and giggling. Sometimes guests said that they were tucked in at night, which is, uh... Yeah, that's pretty... That's weird. Pretty gnarly. So of course, the Stanley Hotel has become a popular tourist spot and gives ghost tours by a creepy lady named Scary Mary during your stay. <laughs> I don't think that's her real name. I hope not. No. Next up, we have the Lollery House. We we were in New Orleans covering American Horror Story and this house was heavily involved in the series, so we actually got to visit it. So uh, let's cut to Elliot over in New Orleans right now. It's Ooh. weird, you're here and there. In the early 1800s, Madame Lollery was a really rich lady, a big socialite here in uh, Louisiana high society, but she had a dark secret. Namely, that she had a lot of slaves, and she liked to torture them in her attic. In 1834, a fire broke out at the house, and when the firefighters responded, they went up into the attic and uncovered basically dozens of slaves that clearly had been tortured, some with their lips sewn shut, some with their intestines pulled out, fingernails pulled off, various dismemberments, brandings, all sorts of really fucked up shit. And she uh, wisely got the fuck out of Dodge and uh, supposedly went to Paris where she lived out the rest of her days. The mansion was left abandoned and every tenant afterward didn't stay for very long. Someone claimed to be attacked by a man in chains, others said there were animals butchered, Kids were hit with phantom whips, and everyone claimed to hear screams and crying. It was later bought by Nicholas Cage, Cage, and the IRS came down on him and took that right away. Next up, this is uh, this is my favorite. I've actually been super interested in this place for a long time. It's Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it was originally opened in 1910 as a two-story hospital, but after an outbreak of tuberculosis, it was expanded heavily to accommodate more and more patients. Uh, it was first closed in 1961, but it actually reopened a year later to house patients with severe mental handicaps. Uh-oh. Yeah. Treatments used inside the sanatorium were very extreme and experimental, including removal of organs and electric shock therapy, among others. Yeah, psychiatry was a... Uh... Yeah, it was kind it of was like a just fresh science throw stuff then. at the wall and yeah. see what, Yeah, maybe this will fix it. Yeah. So pull out half his brain. Eh, it didn't work. Sure, Oops. put an put a ice pick in his nose and <laughs> separate his brain. That'll probably calm him down. Legends claim that there were over 60,000 deaths at the sanatorium, but while the actual reported number is pretty high, it's not that extreme. That's a lot uh, of see, deaths. Yeah. Independent researchers concluded that it was close to 8,000, but that's still pretty fucking high for this giant insane asylum. So obviously there have been reports of hauntings in the old sanatorium. There's one room specifically where a nurse apparently committed suicide where people have reported paranormal activity. Yeah, and then there's the death tunnel where Ooh. bodies of the deceased were transported through uh, that is constantly used in ghost hunting videos and TV shows. Like everybody that died there went through this tunnel to exit the building. So if anywhere's gonna be haunted in this place, it's the, the death tunnel. I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> You can actually visit Waverly Hills to try to have your own ghost experience, so if you're in the area at some point, check it out and report back to us. Yeah, I've always thought it'd be super interesting if we went there, because they let you stay overnight, and you can just go nuts, so... Uh, I'd have to pick up one of those Louisville sluggers before I went in there. <laughs> Whoa! My, my Louisville trip. Next, so this one has a pretty interesting uh, history based on just the people that stayed there alone. Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia. Yeah, this former prison in Philadelphia has certainly had its tales of haunts. Opened in 1829, it was the first true penitentiary and even housed legendary criminal Al Capone. Who had a very, very nice cell for, I mean, all things considered, if you're it's in a prison. It's good to be the king. Yeah. The legends of haunting stem from officers and inmates reporting eerie experiences from within the walls. Well, as with anything old and abandoned, it's a state of disrepair and the fact that some of the worst criminals America has ever seen being housed here for so long, it's definitely a creepy place. Yeah, remember the show MTV's Fear? Yeah. It was actually pretty good. MTV Spirit actually filmed an episode here, and the people on that episode were certainly terrified of whatever they experienced. It's actually reported that 60 paranormal investigation teams explore the site every year. So there's, for them, there's something going on. Maybe Golden them hills. Yeah, exactly. Its reputation is so well known that they now host a yearly haunted experience called Terror Behind the Walls, so that you can see firsthand just how scary it is. Of course, what it lacks in actual paranormal experiences are helped along by, uh, 
filling the prison with actors determined to freak you the fuck out. So See, like, you're gonna get scared, but it's gonna be some guy in a sounds, suit. Uh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Then let's move on to the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. I'd like to go on record here as stating if there's any state in this entire country that's haunted, it's fucking New Jersey. There are so many old abandoned rundown things in this state that certainly one of them has to be hiding some spirits. In fact, Elliot, about seven years ago, some friends and I went to an abandoned asylum uh, in the middle of the night in New Jersey and explored it. It was mm. definitely unsettling and we were no doubt scared, but it was more cool than freaky. We even put one of my friends in a body cooler in the morgue there and locked him in it. It was pretty sweet. If you want to check out that video, you can <laughs> click right here. Oh, there's a video. Yeah, but remember, it was seven years ago. It was like on the dawn of YouTube, so it's the worst quality you could ever imagine. It's like 240p and all we had were flashlights and camera phones. 18 so. pixels wide. Yeah, uh, but let's concentrate on one of the more famous tales of New Jersey folklore. The legend of the Jersey Devil in the Pine Barrens. The Pine Barrens is a heavily forested area in southern New Jersey. It covers over one million acres, so if for some reason you got dropped in here, you'd most likely get lost and lose your mind trying to get out rather than being scared to death by spirits. Yeah. Now, the New Jersey Devil is a creature that inhabits the forest, apparently. It's described as a kangaroo-like creature with a goat's head, bat wings, horns, clawed hands, hooves, and a forked tail. It's like someone just dumped every creepy creature thing into a giant pot, mixed it all together, and they're like, fuck it, this is our thing now. We just made a brand new creature. What kind of animal penis does it have? Uh, probably a duck, like one yeah, of those spiral the corks. Are, <laughs> yeah, the most terrifying penis yeah, of the worst. Wall. A woman named Mother Leeds gave birth to the creature in 1735. That's a true story. She actually gave, it's on record that she had 13 what? kids and that one went missing. So maybe this is actually true. Uh, it came out looking normal, but then changed form into what we described before. Then it killed the midwife and flew up the chimney and entered the Pine Barrens. Of course. Like you do. Yeah. There have been numerous sightings since its escape, including one from Joseph Bonaparte, who was Napoleon's older brother, and the Bonapartes would never lie, right? Oh. No. <laughs> got a, a family name to keep up Yeah. With. The Jersey Devil's been accused of killing livestock and terrorizing residents nearby. It's basically the chupacabra of yeah. the eastern seaboard. Or like the Bigfoot, yeah. Uh, it apparently hit its high point in 1909 when there were hundreds of published encounters with the beast. And at the time, there was even a $10,000 reward for proof of its existence in the form of dung. You know, like Satan shit. Yep. On the, just pick it up, send it to the zoo, well, and they give you $10,000. Here you go, $10,000. Uh, it remains a cultural icon in New Jersey, and even their hockey team's named after it, so it makes good sense to keep the legend going, regardless of how fucking stupid it sounds. Yeah. But again, I will say, I would not enjoy being in the Pine Barrens for any amount of no, time. No, it's real creepy. It's, uh, I don't like woods. Let's move on to Lizzie Borden's bed and breakfast in Massachusetts. Well, that sounds just lovely, Elliot. Tell me about Lizzie Borden's bed and breakfast. That sounds like a real treat. Well, I'll, I'll sing a little poem for you. It's, uh, Lizzie Borden took an ax and gave her mother 40 wax. And when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. She what? killed her parents. Oh, okay, that's not, that's not she good. She didn't give him like wax yeah. with an axe. Oh, okay. Yeah. On August 4th, 1892, Abby and Andrew Borden were brutally murdered with a hatchet in their home by their daughter, Lizzie Borden. Well, that's what people think anyway. She was actually found not guilty of the murders and released from jail after the trial, but no one else was charged and the case remains unsolved. So, maybe it was ghosts? No, it's still a widely held opinion that Lizzie did in fact carry out the murders. And what's the number one cause of ghosts? Mostly people with unfinished business on Earth. And since their murders were never solved, and Lizzie got away with it, there's a high probability that if ghosts exist, her parents are still wandering the halls of that murder house. Uh, you can, of course, attempt to experience these spirits on your own by staying in the actual murder house, which yeah. has been turned into a lovely bed and breakfast, with many of the guests who have stayed in the house reporting that they definitely, absolutely, they're not lying, they had otherworldly experiences, and they're not just hamming it up for the Yelp reviews, they swear by it, Elliot, they swear that they've seen shit. I think the best one I've seen is like, there's a bunch of Instagram pictures of people let, like where uh, one of the bodies was found all hacked up on the couch, they're just laying in it in the same position. It sounds uh, like it's fun. Real, real charming. All right, and then we have the Buckner Mansion. We actually had the pleasure of speaking with one of the caretakers of the Buckner Mansion. Uh, that, this one was actually featured on American Horror Story Coven uh, about the real history of the house and the paranormal experiences that she witnessed firsthand. Firsthand. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? I'm here with Andy Anderson, and we are at a very haunted place. Um, tell, tell us about where we're at right now. You're at the Buckner Mansion in New Orleans, Louisiana. It has uh, many spirits. So who are the spirits that haunt the Buckner there Mansion? Are two. There is one unknown, a little girl about five years old. I'd say she's five, maybe six, wearing a bonnet and a long dress. I lived in the wing, which was originally the slave quarters. I lived there for three years. And believe me, these spirits are present. So you had experiences in the house. Tell us about one experience uh, in particular. One experience that I had was I heard what sounded like nails on glass. And I never could explain it, but I would hear it two or three nights a week. And it sounded like somebody was 
writing in the glass. And one morning I got up, I went downstairs, walked past the window that I walked past every morning, and there was Laura carved into the glass. The oldest child of Mr. Buckner was Laura Buckner. And if you want an idea of how long this house has been here, the Buckners lived here for nine years when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Of course there's souls, of course there's spirits. We know that they're here and they know we're here. So like there's a, apparently a bazillion haunted places in America. I guarantee you that wherever you're from, your hometown or some city near it has some crazy haunted tale about how it's yeah. the scariest, most haunted place on earth. So I guess put those in the comments uh, we get, so we can check out some of those. I, yeah, I feel like every- hotels in downtown LA yeah, every town has haunted. It. Uh, have you had a, a haunted experience? Absolutely not. No? And I've, I've wanted it to happen so badly. I lived, I lived in a house over here that was like super old. It was built in the 1800s. Every person that lived there said they had some kind of fucked up experience. I never had an experience there, so I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't happen to open me. up your mind, man. No. Gotta but tell us about your happen. spooky ghost. Ooh. Ooh. And we'll Bye. see you next time.